Hello ladies and gentlemen of the internet. I hope you guys are enjoying your day here in New York State. It's a beautiful day and hopefully it's a prosperous day. Today we are going to check out the GS1000. As you can see I have the carburetors off. I just took those off. I got my rebuild kit in finally. It's taken weeks and weeks and weeks. I have all the old parts out, put all the new parts in. I'm working on the last carburetor. There's a screw that's just not right, so I have to go buy a new one. Here's the one that I have to replace. Earlier today, I wanted to make it my mission to get this accomplished even before the carb kits even came in. I'm like, the machine freaks want the gator done. Let's get the gator done. Screw, screw, where are the screws? Okay, I got my new screw installed. Now I just have to tighten up the rest of the screws on the carburetor bowl, and we should be ready to throw this thing back into the bike. All right, they're all tight. The only thing is, is I lied. I actually have to check the float levels before I put it in the bike because if the float levels are off, then gas will start leaking or the engine won't run right because there's not enough fuel. You see, I could just have good faith in that the parts, well, the new parts work. I have some amazing news. Very, very amazing news. Every single one of these carburetors passed the test. They all passed the test. Let's slap these things in this engine. So we know our fuel is at the right level. If it goes into the engine now at the right rate of, at the correct rate, then that's awesome. Because we have new coils which deliver electricity to the spark plugs. We have new spark plugs that then generate that electricity into spark. Unfortunately with engines we have all these different variables, but as long as we listen to the maintenance manual or service manual, as long as our numbers agree with those numbers, then we're golden. The spark, the spark plug retrieval. This is always fun. There we go. Man, I don't know what I ate, but I'm ripe. Maybe it was that McDonald's from yesterday. Hi, how can I help you? That was a lot of fun. I, I do have to admit, that cop was awesome. Oh, he pulled me over. You guys know, I drove my dirt bike to McDonald's yesterday. <laughs> Successfully got something to eat. Unfortunately, I got pulled over by the cops later on. We are locked and loaded. Let's hook it up to some power. Crank it over. This thing should run. It should run. Here we go. Spits and sputters. I'm gonna check the spark plugs, see if any of them are too wet, too dry.
Check it out. Check it out. It's smoky, but it's running. I've probably been at this for about five hours now, and I've got the low adjustment settled out, I believe. However, when I give it some gas, some cylinders backfire out the exhaust, and some backfire out of the carburetor. And what I mean by that is, you'll actually feel air coming out of the carbs, or you'll hear air coming out of the exhaust. So I've n narrowed that down to one and three coming out of the carb, and then two and four coming out of the exhaust or at least maybe number two, or maybe number four, or both. I'm not absolutely certain, because unlike the unlike carburetor one and two, I can't just put my hand in front of it and say, oh yeah, it's backfiring. That only has one port to you know hear or feel. Because I don't have the best equipment, I literally have to take these things on and off. David C., thank you for the gloves. I just ran out, so uh, thank you. I sincerely appreciate it. So I turn off my fuel, I unplug the fuel line, I disengage my throttle cable. Keep in mind that this engine is about 250 degrees. Pull these off. Okay. And then make my adjustment, because I can't fit my hand underneath these things. So to keep it simple for everybody, I will mark the carburetors and show you what needs to be done to each one. This is carburetor one, this is carburetor four. One was backfiring from the carburetor, so I'm going to go out with that one half a turn. This one, I believe, was backfiring to the exhaust, so I'm going to go in a turn. Unfortunately, they just don't take all the same adjustment. It'd be much easier. It'd be like, okay, you know what? It's running rich. It's running lean. No. Cylinder one might be running rich. Cylinder number four might be running lean. It's just time consuming. I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's like watching the Kool-Aid guy going through a wall a hundred times. Just to get boring after the first 10. Don't ask how I came up with the Kool-Aid guy analogy. You'd think of some pretty weird stuff too if you were huffing gas all day. Good news is it stopped smoking as much. I, along with you guys, cannot wait to tear this engine out and start throwing it in the gator. The good news is the RPM is increasing. So we're getting so we're getting closer to full power, which is awesome. Carb number one through three continue to backfire through the carburetor, number one being the worst, number three being the second worst, and number two being the third worst. Number four does not backfire out of the carb. I hope the points I hope the points are off. Because as you guys know, I don't know how to deal with that stuff. I don't have the patience to learn. Now yesterday when I went to McDonald's on my dirt bike, I mentioned that I took a few days off to develop a course to show other people how to make YouTube videos and how to get paid to do you. I currently am my own boss, I don't listen to anybody, I go and do what I gotta do, get the job done, make my money under my own time. YouTube's a great platform for that. In the course I show you my best month analytics and then I show you my current month analytics. I show you how to improve tag pictures to improve other people's content to get you more views, subscribers, and money. To be quite honest, if somebody offered this course when I first started up, I would have definitely purchased it. It would have got me in the game a lot faster. It would have made me a lot more money a lot faster. And it would have helped me develop what I have here at 3D Machine. Everybody has one of these. When I first started out, the camera that I used was probably a tenth as good as this. As long as you have one of these and a computer, all you need is some editing software. You can get it anywhere from $20 to like $60. And you can choose what you want to do and do it really well every single day, even if you don't upload every day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. We did move a step forward. You have a high and a low. We got the low all set up. Now we gotta figure out the high. Maybe there's a clog jet. I'm not sure. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comment section below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until tomorrow, 3D Machines out. Stay froggy fresh, you sexy person. Mm -hmm.